Okay, so let's take what we know about Marvelous Designer and make our curtains. Those were kind of the biggest cloth item in this scene, in addition to the little pillow that I made over here, which used the techniques I demonstrated, and this pillow here. Let's make these curtains, though. These are going to be really useful for us. Now, I have this nice curtain rod that is all modeled out, but I'm going to actually take something much more simple to drape my curtains on, just to make it simple for us and easy to drape in Marvelous Designer. So we'll just take a simple line. Doesn't even need to be that big. Let's just make it this big. Make it renderable like that. It's the right size. We'll just convert to a poly and then export selected as an FBX. Okay, these are the settings. I'm just leaving them at whatever my last export was and these look like they should be fine. Okay, in Marvelous Designer, let's just import that little curtain rod we did. Import FBX, curtain rod. Okay, we'll move it up about there. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is just make two pieces of fabric for the loop that goes over the rod. And we're gonna sew them together to create that loop. And then we're gonna move them into place over here around the rod so that when we simulate, they don't fall to the ground, but they go to their place on the rod. Okay, make sure we're on the correct side of that rod, move it into place, move these both down. Okay, once you get into place, it looks like our sew lines could be a little cleaner, so let's edit those. I think we actually want it sewn like this and like that. Yeah, that'll do it. Now, you can see that our sew lines are going above and below that rod, and our panels are on each side of it, so let's simulate and see what happens. Okay, it basically worked, except that part of it missed, so let's reset that real quick. And I think that if we move it into place a little better, it should work fine. Simulate. There we go. Drops right onto there. Now what we're going to do is take another panel for our curtain. Make it about that big. Put it into place. And then what we're going to do there is sew it to the bottom of this panel. Make sure it's in the right place, it looks right. Let's simulate and see. Okay, there we have a nice curtain. And you can see we've fallen through a little bit up here, which we don't want. So let's undo that. Move it up a little bit. Okay, I did a selection on this, right clicked it and hit solidify. No, I hit strengthen. And it almost worked. Still ripping through over there. Okay, what I've done now is take these two panels up here, selected them, and turned on Solidify. You can do it over here by selecting these two panels and going to Solidify on. You can strengthen it more if you want. Okay, and then when I moved them back into place and simulated, they made that kind of shape. So they don't uh, drape as much, but they're also hanging onto that rod still. My other curtain has just fallen down to the ground. So let's select that, reset 3D arrangement, and then, oh, I turned off the sewing here so that this wasn't hanging on that and dragging it off of the rod. So now that it's nicely draped, we can take the curtain and attach it to there again, like this, and then simulate. Okay, now that's really hanging on there nicely. It's trying to rip through over there, but not quite. Okay, so that's a nice curtain that's open. Now's when the magic happens. Um, you might want to change that so it's not quite draping on the floor. And you would, of course, do that by moving this up. Oops. Moving that up. Turn on simulate. There you go. Now it's not quite touching the floor. I actually wanted to touch the floor a little bit. 
right about there. Okay, now this is where the magic of Marvelous Designer happens. If we take this panel here and scrunch it up, then this curtain will follow. And to scrunch that up, all we have to do is this and drag that back. Like so, now watch this. Okay, we still have an issue with that tearing through, but you can see how the curtain nicely just folded. Okay, to fix that thing tearing through, I've actually had more success by just turning off solidify, but using the shrinkage weft and shrink of shrinkage warp numbers. I had to set it 100, if I put it to 50, then it it doesn't give that thing as much leeway to stretch and warp, so it was not able to tear through the curtain rod. But there we are with the nice curtain. I think you could use some more tessellation on there. So what you would do for that is turn down the particle distance. So we'll put it to about 12, and that will add more faces to our mesh here. You can change from triangular, under miscellaneous, you can change from triangular. Oh, and I actually don't want to just change those ones. I want to change this one. So you select the panels here, and then you can adjust. So particle distance here on this one, 12. You can see that's a little nicer. Actually, let's go even lower, like 8. Getting a really high poly curtain here. You could change it to quad. And then what you can do, of course, is turbo smooth it once you get it back into 3ds Max. And it'll look really nice. And you notice it hugs that that curtain rod perfectly right now. So that's great. So you can just do this over and over and make random simulations and then layer your curtains on top of each other, make different looking curtains. I mean, you buy these things online, these curtains for, you know, 15 bucks for a little collection of them. You can make all your own custom curtains in Marvelous Designer quite easily. And you could maybe even sell your own collection. Okay, there's our final result. It's, uh, it's a nice flowy cloth curtain. So um, it's as easy as that with Marvelous Designer. It makes it quite simple for us. And when we export it back in, it'll look really good. So we're going to take this finished product and we're going to export it. So all you have to do is file export. Because I turned up the mesh quite a bit, it's, it takes a little while to process. It's going to be really not high quality. And back in 3ds Max, we don't worry too much, depending on your computer, of course, but I'm not going to worry too much about my poly count or anything like that. On export settings, of course, you can do thickness or thin, uh, which makes it so that that curtain doesn't have a thickness. I think we'll just go thin. I don't think the thickness is going to add anything for us, especially if you don't see that close up. You can add thickness, and then you could go in and add kind of some some seams and maybe some sew lines, things like that, if you really wanted to get detailed. We'll just go thin on this one, and we can put a shell on it in 3ds Max if we really wanted to. Okay, and then import. Let's see what we get here. Sitting right there on our rod. Okay, perfect. It's not tall enough. So we should have measured this out properly before we did it, but you get the point. That's how these curtains were made, and that's how you can make your own curtains. Look how nice that is, actually. It's quite good. I think you could use another turbo smooth on this for sure. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Okay, and we forgot to turn these two quads, obviously. They're triangles. But, I mean, that's not going to matter. That will still work for you. Let's isolate this. Okay, now what you could do, like I was saying, is you could put a shell on it if you want it to have thickness. Let's see what else we can do with this curtain if we want. Let's turn off the turbo smooth for a minute. Put a shell on it. I think would be even better, though. Let's see. Let's try the shell just to demonstrate. Okay, the shell will add some thickness to it. And then you could put the turbo smooth on top of that. Now, granted, that's going to at least double your poly count, actually a lot more because it now has these edge polys too. Now, you want the turbo smooth on top of the shell. Look at all those subtle wrinkles. It might be a little too much on these curtains, actually, but. Something you could never get by just modeling with polys. You need that cloth modifier. And that can add just that 
little bit of realism that really puts your image over the top. So this is great. This has thickness now, which makes it look even more realistic. And the best part, of course, is if you put an unwrap UVW modifier on this, you'll see that it's already totally unwrapped. If you open the UV editor, we'll see our panel sitting in here. Super high poly. <laughs> Okay, and I showed you before, you just have to pack them and they'll go, they'll go down in a perfect little texture for you. Okay, so those panels remain flat, so you can paint textures onto them or just add a texture map to it and it will map across it perfectly. So there you go, there's your curtain. I guess the only other thing you could do, instead of the shell, I wanted to try adding some edges to it manually. And of course, right after I say that we don't need to worry about poly count, we get these crazy poly counts on this thing and it's just killing us okay let's get rid of our unwrap UVW you could take these edges and you could do a loop on them it seems to work yeah at least down to there then you could start here and go another loop and another loop all the way up I think it went all the way up okay and then from there you can just do a create shape linear Okay, and you can put manual edges on this where the fabric has been sewn back over itself for to make to make an edge. Okay, so now that's just a renderable spline. You can make it rectangular like this. Make it real small, right? Something like that. Then you could put a turbo smooth on that. Now it's got a nice edge on it. Right? You could make some little stitching and use the align tool again to go all the way around this spline to add some sewing. You can do whatever you want. But I think for our purposes, that is going to work for our scene. And it's going to have this nice flowing cloth look to it, which will add a lot of realism and be very convincing.